Well, hello there, it's Wayne Robson again with Nuke for 3 d Artists. After the last video where I showed you how to do the whole uh, positions of points to get a point cloud and stuff like that, um, we're now going to take it another step. The first thing I want to do is get rid of that light. We do not need it. Bye bye, Mr. Light. Right, so there we go. We've got our point position passed, uh, doing all that stuff over there. Uh, I'm actually going to change this image again to the close-up shot, like that. Now we're going to do it over here, and we'll treat this as a separate floor for the moment, right? Now what I'm going to do, first of all, is I need a relight node. Relight nodes are fantastic. They really are. Now, I'm going to collect the colour of that straight away. And I'm going to need some light. So first of all, I'm going to keep things very well organized for once in my life. I do when I'm working um, client stuff, but normally when it's just me, um, you know, things get whatever name they get. So we'll have a uh, point light, you know, point, collect that under there, put lights in here, like that, at the moment. So we've got a light. I need to uh, just quickly give it, a position we'll put it down the bottom of that we'll put it up over like that so as you can see we've got a bit of feedback on it so there's our that's where our lights are going to go next we're going to have to shuffle out in this case um the reflection there's no refraction on this so i'm going to take my reflection which looks like that that's my reflection pass because we're going to need to later on composite that over our ring light. It will not affect um, the reflections, refractions, subsurface stuff. It, this is only useful for a 3D artist in my view. If you have access to the scene file, great. But if it's a long render time or the farm's chock a block and you have uh, a director or an art director uh, or a lead sitting over your shoulder um, then and they want lighting changes, it's a good way to block stuff in and get it agreed straight away. Now, I'm also going to have camera, and I'm going to have a merge, which we're going to put to plus, and we're going to have that, there's B, this is, is the A down here, right? So we've got that there, and so far what we have is this, right? We've got, we've got to set the scene up again, make sure my render's put no, I've got that right there. We need a scan line render again, I could have just copied it, but you know, I'm sure we can deal with it. Um, I'm going to put the camera over here, we will need to uh, sort a lot of this out. Alright, so... I just realized I do not need a scanline render. So I'm thinking the wrong way. Right, so the relay, what we need under here, normal vectors. Boom, normals. Right, point, point, boom. Right, we've got that all there. So we can view this here. Um, and we've got our color and stuff. Now what we do need to do, which I've forgotten about, we're using camera two. I need to take camera two here, and then I'm gonna to have to pause this while I export this as an Olympic. Um, so I'm gonna go export selected, and then I'm gonna have this as an Olympic file, and then put the location. I'll be back in a second. Right. And the first thing I'm gonna do is have single because it's not animated. Okay. Now then I will, might also put the other camera in just to you know keep everything right. So it's going to do its auto save now, which is fantastic and all that. While it's doing all that, I want to get a camera. But we'll just copy this bloody camera, stick him over here. Like this. And on this camera here, we need to go into there. We've got file, read from file, boom. So I need to take there. Oh, bloody hell, swear. Da, 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 da. It's been one of those days. Right. Camera two. Boom. You want to read the, the stuff into there? Yeah, sure as hell we do. Lovely. We then connect the camera to the relight node. Now, 
if I just change my floor a little bit here um, as well. Now, we have at the moment one light, okay? We've got one bloody light and it's currently right way up there, right? So what we're going to do is going to have to take this and change things around a bit because obviously the point position we have is not in the correct place. So I'll just stick on there, do all that. I need to get my viewer node over here. So our main pass here, we've got that there. We don't need to use the alpha. We could stick ambient on it, but there's no real point. Uh, we have our reflection pass. What we don't have um, out of this is, if I shuffle out first of all, just make sure that I'm getting the RGB values from this like that. So I should have that in there. Color. We could take a material. In fact, we go up here, we can take a shader, and we'll just have a basic material here, which we should also be able to connect to that. So we've got a basic material here. Now, our reflection, maybe we think the reflection is too much on here, so which we do really. So I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to knock it off. I'm going to take my light in here. In fact, if I merge this temporarily, that one, in just so I can see what, what the heck I'm doing, you know, and we can light things correctly. So that's behind. Like that. I'll take this one off for the moment now. So I've got my point. I'll change it from a point a point light to let's say uh, a directional light. So, so I've got the downwards there. Um try aim it a bit like this and take it around like that. So we've got a nice rim light there. And he's a good trick for you, right? We take some of the reflection back in a bit. Um, you can then uh, we'll just shuffle out. What we don't need to shuffle out. What I'll do is I'll merge, merge in, have an add, all right? Plus. Now what we'll do is we'll take that, which is of course like got a rim light and stuff, right? So if we take onto here, don't need anything else, okay? Turn the light up, I don't know, let's try it by five. Make it a blue light. All right, we've got a blue light there. Then we take this original image here and put it over there. All right, so now that is going to be on top of this, which gives us ding that. See? Now, if we want to make that even stronger, we've got 10, we can move it around. So we've got our lights, we could, um, you know, do something like that. And now we've got horribleness, but you, you can basically relight it. There is a, a workflow using a uh, specular shader, but be honest, this is much easier. Um, and it's a lot better to do. So I'm, as I said before, you've got your, um, your point cloud, you know, so you can help orientate things. And it gives you a bit of a clue. Uh, sometimes with, with this, you have to really have it the uh, camera data in. Um, or if you don't have the camera data, then you can usually work around it, to be honest. And a lot of these different options for lights, camera material, color, they only, um, if I show you what I mean, if I start another model, you can see at the moment, all it's got is lights and color. You have to connect and drag and connect from the camera in to get the camera input and from the material, the material input, right? Simple as that. So there, there we go. It's very easy to relight. So next time um, you have an art director or somebody, you know, as a lead who's a pain in the backside like me, and they're looking at this shot and they go, well, what we really need is a rim light. Boing, easy, right? 
You don't have to hit render. You just say, is that what you want? And you might say, oh, well, actually, I want it more orange or yellow. You know, you can change the colours in real time. Um, you could put two of them on, right? So, in fact, let's do that because it's creepy, creepy. So, I'm going to have a second point of light, all right? Now, this one, I'm going to try and just get it working from the other side, which is not as as easy as it looks. Try to get in there. Right, so now we can take it, move it around a bit. Like that. So we're not one off. And we'll see where we're at. We've got a bit of a rim light there. We're getting there, so we need to take this one and just maybe do that a bit, see where we're at. So we've got that one and that one. We can see this one here, which is on that side. It's maybe a bit too much, so let's just put that down to six. And instead of that having blue, uh, have that one as a yellowy thing, maybe not quite as yellow as that. And there you go. Um, of course, when you've got that, you can do all sorts of stuff, um, like Z defocus on this. Um, you can see da 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 focal plane setup. Ding 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 ding. Find the focal plane. There's not a lot of depth in this at the moment. Um, so there we go. We've got that one there, and then we can take it from setup to result, and you've got a bit of blur in it. You can grade it, you know. So let's just say we want to. Uh, darker, a bit lighter, like that. Maybe add a multiply on here and just tint it very slightly to just cool it off a bit. Do whatever you like with it, right? So, you can take your image and you can relight the whole thing. So that's part second part of the tutorial. I'm sorry if I seem to like lose my way a little bit in the middle. It's just I'm quite tired and to be quite honest, a little bit hungover from last night. Although I'm not the first person to have to do 3D with a slightly hangover. Right, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.